This is the story of a legendary killer, Peter, who is the target of tons of incredibly powerful organizations all over the world. But the surprising part is Peter is a senior citizen in his 60s. So why are all these people haunting a 60-year world, and how did he become a handsome boy in his 30s again? Watch till the end, because this will get much more interesting. The first chapter opens with a scene of Peter in his small bookstore in the countryside. He is now an old man, and he is clearly sick and frail. He will only live a few months at this rate, but he is not afraid of dying. He devoted 50 years to an organization, and he even doesn't regret that. All he regret is he didn't take a single photo, and he spent all his life working. Then, a teenage girl enters Peter's bookstore in the countryside. She asks for a middle school textbook, and Peter confirms that she is a third-year student based on her name tag. He offers her the book for free, noting that she must care deeply for her younger brother. The girl then asks Peter if he has any regrets in life. He replies that he has lived a long life and has his share of regrets, but then remembers his family. He tells her that she may not understand, but to always take care of her siblings, no matter what. Unexpectedly, the girl grabs a knife and prepares to attack Peter from behind. However, he anticipates her move and tells her that he knows everyone in town. He explains that he asked her the question to confirm her story, as there have only been two years since the school opened, so there are no third-year students yet. The girl is shocked that Peter has recognized her, and he explains that he has lived a life surrounded by the smell of bloodshed, and there is no way he would miss the smell of her knife. She tries to attack him with the knife, but he dodges her and still offers her the book for her sibling, guessing that she has a sibling in real life. He then tells her that she must be from the Yongguang orphanage, just like him. Peter tells the girl that if anyone in the organization fails to provide volunteer service, Plan B will be initiated. He says this while grabbing her neck and running with her to avoid two men who are attacking them. He manages to avoid the bullets and tells her that if she fails her mission to kill him, the organization will carry out Plan B, which is to kill both the target and the volunteer. Peter is shot in the stomach and tries to point a gun back at the men, but they take the girl hostage and beat him. They then mock him, saying that he is actually the legendary Peter, who was the talk of the organization. One of the men from Octoman mocks him further, saying that even legends can't escape cancer. Peter asks the men what they will get by killing them. They reveal that the boss is nervous because of him, since there are thousands of people out there who want him dead. The bounty on his head is currently $7.6 million USD. Peter says that the amount should be his, not a bounty on his head, but the men beat him again, saying that they will take the money. They knock him out by throwing him into a corner room and laugh, saying that it was easier than they thought. Peter smartly throws a flare bomb and runs out the back door. It was actually his plan to lure the men to the back door so that he could escape. We then see him lying down in the park, in pain from the gunshot wound. He feels bad that he couldn't even put up a proper fight and says that he is aged. He then remembers when the company was his entire life. When other kids were learning to write with a pencil, he was shedding blood learning to use a knife. When other kids were talking about girls, he was learning to tap phone calls until his ears bled. When other kids were going on dates, he was busy being a Russian spy and fending for himself in the cold. When other adults were getting married, he was busy fighting for his life on the battlefield. He devoted decades of his life to the organization, but with the arrival of the new boss, everything changed. He gave up on the organization, but the new boss wanted to get rid of him. Peter says to himself that he doesn't care about wealth or honor, but he is angry that the organization treated him this way. He says that he can't die like this and that the money belongs to him. At Octoman's hideout, the two boys from earlier are talking about how close they were to stabbing Peter and how much money they would have made if they had succeeded. They say that they will be the ones to get that old geezer and boil him up in a hot pot. A young man enters the room, and the two boys are shocked, saying that he looks just like Peter because of his clothes. The young man murmurs that he woke up and was suddenly in his thirties. The boys scold him, saying that he is in the wrong place and ask him to leave. The young man tells them that he is exactly where he needs to be and asks them to take him to Octoman. The boys laugh at him, saying that he must also be willing to fight for the bounty on Peter's head. 
They say that if he is one of Peter's competitors, they can't let him leave the place alive. One of the boys tries to punch the young man, but he stops his hand with ease. The boy is shocked by the young man's strength. The young man breaks his fingers, and the other boy tries to stab him from behind, but he manages to defeat both of them easily. The young man then says that being able to wield an edged weapon makes someone third class. Being proficient with any weapon makes them second class. And the person who can inversely turn anything into a weapon is first class. The other boy tries to attack the young man, but he manages to defeat him with just an octopus. He then makes the boy boil in the hot pot. The boy asks why the young man is doing this, and he replies that anyone who comes after him can try all they want. But the old Peter is already dead, and the new Peter is back in action. Before we continue, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It takes us a lot of time and effort to create this content, and we appreciate your support. We now see Octoman discussing with the girl that he wants to catch Peter as soon as possible. After fighting with the two guys, Peter checks out the Octoman hideout, but there is no one there. We then see him at the train station, looking in the mirror while everyone is staring at him, thinking he might be a model. He talks to himself, wondering how he became young and how his gunshot wound and cancer cells have vanished. He murmurs that no one will recognize him, even though he has a bounty on his head. He then decides to buy some clothes, as his current ones don't fit him anymore. Inside the hospital, we see two gangsters smoking and discussing how they robbed a family. Peter warns them that it is a non-smoking zone and asks them to smoke outside. They scold him for talking to them in that way, and he is about to beat them up, but leaves. However, instead of leaving, Peter locks the door and and comes back to fight. The gangsters try to beat him up, but he easily defeats them. One of the gangsters tries to attack him with a pocket knife, but Peter tells him that he is holding it the wrong way. The gangster tries to stab him, but Peter defeats him as well, knocking both gangsters out. Peter warns the gangsters not to do anything illegal and leaves. Peter checks his bank account and sees that he has no money left. We then flash back to his childhood at Yangguang Orphanage, a small facility run inside a small church. However, the orphanage is actually a large-scale crime organization with influence over politics and finance all over the world. Peter murmurs that he devoted his entire life to the organization, and now he will be the one to ruin it. Meanwhile, Octoman is talking to an enemy who has hired many people to kill him. However, Octoman easily defeats all of them using his full-body contortion abilities. The main guy is shocked and asks how Octoman is even possible. Octoman leaves without saying a word. Back at Octoman's hideout, he finds his two goons knocked out and immediately suspects Peter. He talks to the girl, who remembers all the kind things Peter did for her. A young man enters the hideout and everyone is shocked. He says that he doesn't have an appointment, but he has a score to settle. Octoman jokingly asks if he has taken a loan from there, and the young man replies that he has a loan of $7.6 million. As soon as Octoman hears the amount, he orders the doors to be locked and asks the young man if he is one of Peter's associates. Both men stare at each other, and Octoman gives the young man two chances to get out alive, tell him where Peter is, or resist and take a bullet to the head. The young man replies that he doesn't like either of those choices, and that he is actually Peter. Peter tells Octoman that he killed his minions. Octoman is surprised and asks what he is talking about. Peter replies saying, are you deaf, and that he already said that he killed them. Octoman wonders how Peter was able to do that, and why he attacked them in the first place. He warns Peter that they have real guns and will shoot him if he doesn't stop. Peter asks Octoman if he really wants to know why he attacked them. Octoman says yes, and Peter replies that there is only one way to find out which is to kill him. Octoman orders his men to shoot Peter, but keep him alive so they can talk. However, Peter throws a blade at one of the men's necks and knocks him out. Everyone is shocked, and Octoman is impressed. He offers Peter a job, but Peter suddenly starts to shoot at him. Octoman manages to hide under a table, but Octoman tells him that it's not a movie, and he won't be able to survive under there. When Octoman takes a closer look at the table, he sees that Peter has already escaped, leaving behind a trail of spilled sauce to look like blood. Octoman starts to search for Peter, but then sees him hanging from a pillar. Peter splits all the food he ate on Octoman and then defeats him in a fight. Octoman is knocked out and confused about how Peter was able to win. He has been training since he was a child, and he doesn't understand how someone could be better than him. Octoman remembers what his coach told him during his training days, that one day he would find someone better than him, and to win, he must have their guard down and act as if he has lost. Octoman tries to do the same thing with Peter. He suddenly grabs Peter's leg, swirls his arms, and tries to put him in a deadlock. 
However, he accidentally grabs one of his own subordinates instead of Peter. Octoman is confused. He has been doing this for years, so how could he make such a careless mistake? He realizes that he is going to die at Peter's hands, and he tries to stop Peter by making a deal. He grabs the girl and says that Peter can do whatever he wants with her as long as he spares his life. Octoman then tries to run away, thinking that he has made a deal with Peter. However, Peter shouts at him saying, don't forget your last resort tactic. The moment you show your back to your enemy thinking you have won the battle, you are dead meat. Octoman is shocked because this is what he learned during his childhood. This means that the only person who could possibly know this is Peter himself. Octoman is still in shock when Peter quickly attacks him and knocks him out. We then see a secretary telling her boss that Octoman has been found dead. The boss is intrigued that the old geezer has made a comeback and already killed some of his people. The boss gives the order to kill Peter, which means that the bounty is on. A billboard shows an advertisement from the organization with Peter's face on it, saying to provide a warm meal for a senior citizen and donate. This is a clear indication that there is a bounty on Peter's head. Peter sees one of his own advertisements and murmurs that they won't need to find him because he will find and kill them all himself. Subscribe us because we will be back with another video.